We have all been there. You're walking into a grocery store when you hear a child screaming at the top of their lungs. It took just one word to send this kid into a mental breakdown. And that word was no. I've always wondered why not just our children, but our entire culture is so adamantly against the word no. So I set out to find an answer to this question, and I've come to this conclusion. There is a disease spreading in the lives of millions, and it's called the entitlement mentality. Entitlement at its core is the belief that I deserve. I want to ask you all a question today. Would you consider yourself an entitled person? Most of us would probably say no. But I hope that after today, as we look at entitlement in our culture, community, and even our churches, you'll be able to recognize entitlement and see how dangerous it really is. We can only be content when we're able to identify and destroy entitlement in our own lives. But first, we must look at how entitlement has infected our culture. Entitlement starts at a young age. My generation believes they're so important, they should be able to go to college for free, get any degree they want, and then get a job that pays six figures right after graduating. We see this in the increasing support of candidates that run on the basis of giving you free college, free healthcare, and free handouts. According to a Harris poll, 73% of Gen Z supports universal healthcare. 67% support free college, and an astounding 49% say they'd rather live in a socialist country. We believe that if other people have money, they should just give it to me, because they have too much. Why? Because I deserve. Tom Rainer, in his article Entitlement, says, quote, The federal government is the most obvious example of entitlement. It has 235 entitlement pr programs that cost taxpayers over a trillion dollars every single year. We have created the biggest lie of my generation. I deserve. But has American culture always acted this way? Well, to answer that question, we just need to look at history. The Oregon Trail was a 2,000 mile treacherous journey taken by wagon or by foot. These travelers would load their wagons with their most prized possessions, yet often non-essentials had to be thrown over to keep the wagon from sinking. These travelers faced fear, hunger, death, disease. Being self-centered was not an option if you hope to survive. Compare that to today. While previous generations knew they had to work for everything they had, my generation prefers everything to just be given to them. And of course, we certainly don't want to offend anyone either. Either, According to an article by National Review, Evergreen State College told their professors to take their students' feelings into account when grading them. And expecting people to be on time was declared culturally insensitive at Clemson University. We have experienced a cultural shift from an others-focused mindset to a me-focused mindset. Entitlement is hurting more than just our culture. It has also infested our communities, or how we interact with others. We have become self-centered, egotistical. We have become entitled. Robert Greene put it this way. Quote, we must see this sense of entitlement as a curse. Why should I raise my game or strain to improve myself when I'm already so great? It makes us insensitive and self-absorbed. End quote. How many times have you heard someone say, you were too good for them, just be yourself, or speak your own truth? Many of my generation have even struggled to find jobs, as they feel entitled to a job that pays enough to satisfy their Starbucks cravings, while also allowing them to do as little work as possible. Unbelievably, this sense of entitlement has become so extreme that we can no longer handle rejection. 
There once was an up-and-coming reporter who proudly wrote her first column. Her boss came in and began giving her some constructive critiques. He explained that this is a thoughtful, well-written article, but you did misspell the word hamster. There's no P in hamster. The woman explained, but that's how my mother taught me to spell it. And after looking it up in the dictionary, she began to break down. She stormed out of the room, slammed her books on a table, and called her mother. Through tears, she told her mother, my boss told me I spelled hamster wrong. The infuriated mother demanded to speak to the boss, where she explained that he should be fired for not letting her precious daughter spell the words the way she wanted to. It may have been a little hard on recent generations, but being a part of one of these generations, I have seen and been a part of this very issue. We have believed the lie of entitlement. I deserve. I want to ask you all again, would you consider yourself an entitled person? Most of you would probably still say no. But what if I told you that entitlement appears somewhere else and it wreaks more havoc there than anywhere else? It's in our churches and they are being poisoned by entitlement. This type of entitlement crosses generational lines. We are all at fault. There once was a man named Bob, and Bob was looking for a new church home. But Bob was also very picky about what church he wanted to attend. The pastor needed to be 28 years old or younger and have 30 years of preaching experience. He also needed to preach deep, meaningful sermons that never lasted longer than 15 minutes. Bob searched for years to find the right church for him, and he finally settled on a church home. But it definitely wasn't perfect, so he set up a meeting with the pastor. He explained to the pastor, you really should update your song choices, and having a coffee shop in the foyer would keep me from falling asleep during your sermons. But after being rejected, Bob was confused. I mean, he tithes, he practically paid the pastor's salary. So shouldn't the pastor work for him? In Tom Rainer's article, Six Negative Consequences of Church Members Having an Entitlement Mentality, he says, quote, pastor and staff are perceived to be hired hands. Forget the idea of the pastor equipping the saints to do the work of ministry. Entitled members view them as workers to be paid off to do all of the ministry, end quote. As a pastor's kid myself, I've seen conflicts and even church splits over the smallest preferences and opinions. Flowers or no flowers in the sanctuary, a solid wood pulpit or a clear one, each of these conflicts was directly caused by the simple words, I deserve. Bob, angered by the rejection he received, grumbled to fellow members at his new church, eventually leading to a church split. Entitlement was the death sentence to the church. So much evil is rooted in entitlement. Entitlement divides, devastates, and destroys. Yet how many of us still expect life to go our way? How many of us expect God to give us a happy life, obedient children, financial stability, a life free from the restraints of COVID-19? Throughout our day-to-day -day lives, we too say the words, I deserve. And when we say it, can we honestly believe that we're any better than a child screaming on the floor of a grocery store? We have seen the ways in which entitlement causes us to focus on what we don't have. It destroys our culture, our community, and our churches. And it destroys us individually, too. This is normally the part of the speech where I give you the three easy steps to erase all of your entitlement. But I can't. Entitlement affects us all differently. There is no one-size-fits-all solution. But I will recommend that we must learn to do two things, to recognize and to run. First, we must recognize our own entitlement. Are you an entitled person? 
I hope I persuaded you to say yes, because I believe we all feel entitled in some way. And when we recognize our entitlement, we must run. We must run to the God who became nothing to give us everything and ask him to give us a heart of humility. The question all of our hearts must answer is this. What do I deserve? Or what does he deserve? After all, it takes just one word to show us how entitled we all really are. No. But together, let's say no to the I deserve. Say no to entitlement.